I am taking you where most people have never been. This is my personal little shrine. Welcome to my wardrobe and welcome to my beauty space, which is what I will be tackling today. Howdy, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Diana Chu here at Slow Gaze. I am doing a little casual chat with you today and showing you how I decluttered and reorganized my everyday vanity space, my makeup space, my sanctuary, if you will. So if you'd like to see how I transformed my space, uh, please keep watching. If you have not subscribed already, highly encourage you to. You'll see me every single Wednesday with new beauty content. I'm pushing lifestyle and minimalist journey content on Fridays and Sundays, all of them at 11 a.m. Central Time. So let's get cracking with the tour. The built-in shelves came with this house. I'm extremely lucky to have a little walk-in nook and closet. You can see um, that I've been using it kind of sporadically used to have hats up there and then I realized I could barely see anything. Obviously this could all be used for clothing, but I did dedicate these top two tiers sort of as my vanity, as my makeup space. I still have makeup in this Ikea roll out, some hair care at the bottom, and then my nail polish, my wipes. Those are from the Honest Company and this needs a lot of work. This is where I kept my palettes. Um, so I'm going to go through all of this today. It's kind of a nice documentation of where I started. Skincare, deodorant, and just random stuff. And then this basket up here is actually full of makeup that have survived the various declutters I've been going through. I still have way too much makeup to wear on my normal face every single but day. I'm going to start this process by taking everything out. And one and two. And two and one. Remember that Little Mermaid um, song where she's like, who's it's and what's it's galore? That's what I feel like. I have so many who's it's and what's it's, I don't even know what to do. Okay, I rolled out the Ikea little stand and now I have two, two and a half, let's say two and a half fully clear spots. Holy smokes, um, that's not it. We still have this entire thing here. So let's, let's get to it. One of the lessons I learned from reading Marie Kondo's Tidying Up book is that you should declutter but not declutter and try to organize at the same time, which is what I found myself trying to do. So I had tried to already put this tray in order. You can see some shoes and uh, boxes on the side here because I'm trying to figure out my shoe situation. I'll show you a clip here. 36 pairs of shoes to begin with. That was already down from my 55 high. Back to makeup though, the state of this little basket here. Dry shampoos, this one's upside down. I've been putting backups in here or things that I won't use um, until later. I have a backup deodorant that I got uh, as a sample and then some dry shampoos that I've been testing out. This is a backup sunscreen and then a body sunscreen that I do not see myself using in the foreseeable future. As a cardinal rule for myself, I'm trying not to buy backups or duplicates, but I think these can live on because I know I'll get through them. And then this is my Melt Cosmetics jelly bag full of lip products. Lips and eyeshadow palettes are still my kryptonite. At least this bag, I, I used to have a bag that was opaque and now at least I can see the amount of stuff that I have. So I really need to declutter this, but one step at a time. This is my daily makeup bag. Basically, I do have my hair clips up here, things that I know I, I use every single day, stuff for brows, my three favorite brushes. I have my mascara boy brow. So this is my like, if I have to get ready, uh, in five minutes, this is my face. I don't even try to have color or blush on there. In the bottom, I have my uh, foundation products or my skin tint and two concealers. There's simply too many bronzers. I can't figure it out. Like they're very different. Yellow tones, dark cool tones, a red one from Charlotte Tilbury. This one's also Charlotte. Those do have redder undertones. Then we have this strange, slightly pearlescent, cool gray tone. And then of course the cult favorite butter bronzer, deep bronze. I also have a Dior blush that's masquerading as blush, but it's actually the most cool tones of um, bronzers I've seen. Try opening everything up with one hand as you try to record as well. So these two, I guess, are quite similar looking in the pan. This is Nabla and this is Dior Independent, but when I actually swatch them, Dior Independent is on the right, it's barely showing up, and then the dark brown shade is from Nabla. Deferral of de 
Decisions box. It is a makeup purgatory box that I was avoiding to have um, because my makeup collections have been so large in the past that I've been trying to clear out my like extra storage space options so that I have everything in sight. As you know, that can be very overwhelming. So these are products I don't wanna get rid of yet. I have not decluttered them for some reason or another. I think they're stellar. They fit into my makeup regime and philosophy. However, to have them out will be too many decisions to make every single day. So I've set aside some blush. This is the Tower of Blush that I will be using every day. Brown tones, pink tones, deeper pink and highlight tones. Look how dirty that Melt uh, Soft Touch cover has been. Not too mad at it, it's just funny how that stuff happens. Four blushes to pick from, two cream blushes. I found that basically you need just a coral tone and a clear pink blue tone, you know, a warm and a cool basically. Two highlighters that I'll reach for every day, a really natural finish one, this is in Grand Dame, and then the Bathe highlighter that I've been going on about. It's in my September favorites 2020. That's my blinding highlight. Bronzers, I'm going to just keep one overall matte bronzer and then this one, the Dior blush, which I use as a bronzer. This is what I'm going to put into purgatory. Be gone! Of the colorful palettes that I've chosen to consider staying out, I've already put some of them into the seagrass basket, just knowing that I won't reach for them over some of these. So I wanted to keep out like a purple story, a green story, and maybe a blue story because I have a lot of like eyeliners and things that support a blue story. The fact that I bought these and I feel a little bit of guilt around them makes me want to try to use them up more. This I really bought for these two shades. This on the other hand, love that there's that green story that starts to get cohesive. Mochi is such a special color, it's not really showing up true. And then it also has this nice neutral section that has this burnt poopy yellow that's very flattering on my skin tone. This Melt Cosmetics She's in Parties palette, which I've actually really enjoyed, even though it seems really one key. If you're a music buff, you, you'd understand it's kind of like in the key of F minor. You kind of have a whole scale and one octave and that's it. Wow, Melt, you're really winning in this category. Ah, and then we have Pat McGrath. Such a cool tone story. I'm in trouble. I have too many similar tones. I'm discovering that basically these three right here, the Emma Beauty, Poise Black Magic, Tweed by Victoria Beckham, and then the Kendra Experience Chanel. They are basically the same. So if you look at from the top, this guy and Omo look basically the same. And then you have a warm brown, mid-tone brown story right here, and then a burnt red. Same here with the... <laughs> I mean, look at them, they're so similar. Keep one of these out, gotta think on that. Here we have the gold conundrum and the poopy browns. So I really love these yellow tones here in the gold palette by Natasha Denona. I have swapped it around. If you wanna know more about that, I'll link the video where I tell you all about my Natasha Denona palettes down below. However, I have my favorite Melt Cosmetics Rust palette here. I've done a review on this as well. This is the 75 degree palette. Sometimes I really do want something super fast, just really shimmery to put over the lids and they do stay all day really well. If you are like me and seeing all this choice and having a difficult time, I feel ya. Best of luck. Let me get on with this. All right, it's been several hours and... I've been doing other tasks. Deja vu, hey, welcome back to my wardrobe. Let me show you the star of the show. So I did take another look at how I was using this space. Basically, I was using a lot of this area here for my every morning and night routine for my skincare. And I was like, why am I doing my skincare, my ablutions, all the stuff that I normally would be doing in the bathroom? Why am I doing it here? I guess I would come in and grab my PJs from my like loungewear underwear section and then kind of get ready as my own little sanctuary. I had my curling iron and hair dryer here, so I took those out move those to the bathroom, moved all my skincare to the bathroom. This maybe should move to the bathroom, but it's not really used every day. It's mostly for my videos when I switch looks. That's the purgatory box that I'm not gonna touch for another few months. My extras pile, nail polish, and then the lips. Then I commandeered this little wooden tray. Four colorful eyeliners that I like to keep 
copper, blue and red can mix purple if I wanted it to, and this teal is really special. So all my green looks, all my purple looks, and my blue looks are kind of sorted out. These two are my favorite brown everyday liners, a liquid one by Kat Von D, and then the NARS Mambo Honest Beauty Mascara there is my other favorite clean mascara of all time and it's $10 less than the Ilia Limitless Lash. So if you're looking for one and you don't mind using a primer first and then going in with the uh, color on top, it takes a little bit longer, so I don't use it every day, but I love it. And my Kosas Globe, that's the only color I think that has survived the declutters. Ended up with these face objects, and then we have the Victoria Beckham, which I decided was better than the Chanel to keep out. These two I did just decide to keep out so I can use them and, and decide from there. But these are my everyday palettes, plus the green, blue, and purple stories that I had mentioned before. So I feel much better about like all of my makeup here. Same with this space. I know I have a lot of single pot eyeshadows. And then these are my lipsticks. I found that this Fenty Tin Mini Gloss Bombs um, the holiday set of five, and I took out the foam packaging, and now they're perfect for lipsticks of all sizes. I hated the little acrylic furniture that I had that I kept all my lipsticks in previously because it would fit some of them, let's say this square Kosas one perfectly, but it wouldn't fit this Huda Beauty one. So this would always just be standing out there. I'd knock it over. I highly recommend using a tray or something you already have as furniture instead of investing in something that looks like it was made for a very specific purpose. Two red lipsticks, two sheer nude lipsticks. This is like a sheer um, nude and then two brownie pinks. Brushes I've also whittled down. The rest are in Makeup Purgatory and then the rest of my tall lip products. Here I have three face rollers and I'll do a video on those as well. And then this is my little Tom Ford beard comb. This is probably one of the most bougie things that I invested in. I use this for my center part. Finally up here we have some tchotchkes, two winterized scents. These are both kind of unisex. This one's mostly, I think it's called Burberry London for men. I use this fragrance. My dad also uses this fra fragrance and my camera just to uh, remind me that I'm a creative person and it's not just all about beauty sometimes. Um, and then my everyday makeup case and that is the purgatory up there. A before and after on the screen just so you can Take it all in. If you're on a minimalist journey with me, I wish you the best of luck. It is not easy to go through everything to rearrange your space, but I am giving you the permission to completely change up your life. I am giving you the agency to feel like you are in control of your surroundings. I am also encouraging you with kind enthusiasm to say, yes, you can do it, and yes, you can do it well. Um, and also that nothing is perfect, don't be precious. If you wanted to share your vanity with me, I am on Instagram at slowgaze. Please tag me, please let's have a chat or uh, comment down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you on my next video next Wednesday or Friday or Sunday. All right, adios. Take it slow. Don't get in your way, keep it moving. At the pace of every weather, look within. And don't forget you are surrounded by the wind